Welcome to the Sabras channel. This video is going to be how to replace the control arms on an OG93. Uh, so some of the tools you need, there's, there's, we got a whole mess of tools here, but some of the important ones I'll just flash along the bottom of the screen. We also have a couple of different extension bars that will help us get some, some torque on our tools because a lot of these parts, uh, having uh, been up in the rust belt for a while, they are pretty well torqued on there. So I have a titanium lacrosse stick that always comes in handy and then of course our big PVC pipe old Charlotte and first thing you want to do um, it goes without saying uh, get the car up on a jack and make sure it is securely on a jack stand before you ever think about crawling underneath the car next step is to take the wheel off uh, 17 millimeter um, I already have the other side done over there look at that nice and brand new and we're using the control arms from Talaferro, GenuineSob.com. Um, look at these things, aren't these gorgeous? They have the upgraded bushings, which are polyurethane. Um, new ball joints, of course, so all new bushings when you get the, uh, the whole arm as one piece. Um, it also is an upgraded bushing that'll accommodate this bigger, beefier bolt. Uh, look how huge this thing is. Um, it can hold twice the amount of clamping force. So the stock bolt, you usually have about 60-ish foot-pounds on there. And this one goes to 120. Like I said, I've only got the one side done and drove it around, but the uh, effect isn't full until you get both sides done. So next step, once you get this far, is to put a little bit of uh, PB Blaster or WD-40 on the appropriate nuts. You have the 12 millimeter nut, I'm sorry, 13 millimeter nut for the sway bar end link, and the 19 millimeter nut for the ball joint. See, I got them greased up right there. And then when the control arm attaches to the subframe is a 15 millimeter in this car. Um, and let's talk about this nut real quick. Uh, see if you can see them. Uh, the main bolt, the one that we'll be upgrading, is a T55 Torx. It's very clear how much, uh, how tight it is right there. You don't have a whole lot of room before you start bumping into this CV axle. Um, so on the other side, when I did this, it was it was pretty tricky to uh, to get a T55 Torx bit in there. Uh, you essentially had to lower this whole arm, and it was the last bolt to come out. However, in this car, we're going to be replacing the stanchion arm as well, which kind of makes things easy because then all we got to do is remove that. Let's see if you can zoom in here for y'all. We have a 16 millimeter nut on the stanchion arm back there. That's kind of the, the nuts that you have to remove. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, loosening these and show you how I do it. So the first nut to come off is the one for the sway bar end link. Uh, for those of you with a keen eye, you might have noticed I've already taken that off before I started filming. But it is a 13 millimeter. Um, and then if you're not replacing these, uh, it's a good time to because all it is is just one bolt right here to get to take the whole end link out. But if you're not replacing these, there's a little kind of hex shape on top of the sway bar. It's 11 mil. Um, so that way, when you're torquing on this bottom nut, you're not... Uh, ripping your your rubber bushing right here. So I take an 11 mil and put it up top and slide my lacrosse stick over this and then take a breaker bar with a 13 mil and work the nut that way. Push down on this while you're loosening the end link and to kind of mitigate that snap back that you're gonna see. Uh, don't let it scare you. It's, it's gonna happen if you don't have a helper. But when you are putting this thing back in, um, it's gonna be higher won't leave you with a whole lot of thread um, to put this guy in, so Ooh, look at all that. Next one is the 19 mil for our ball joint. There could be a better way to do this, um, but there's really not a whole lot of room with this nut either. Uh, between it and the CV axle, so 
take whichever force mu multiplier that you choose and slide it over our wrench. Here we're going to put Charlotte in action. And once you have them loose, you're not out of the woods yet. I'm gonna leave the nut on there because I still have to separate this ball joint from the steering knuckle. Uh, you can take the nut all the way off, but what you're gonna end up doing is using a pickle fork to separate the two. And it takes a little bit of force, so once that pops out, I, I, it's just it's personal preference. It keeps the thing from just flying out of there. Um, like I said, up to you, whichever way you wanna do. Um, so I'm going to do that down the road, but let's just go ahead and keep on showing you which bolts we're loosening. So next is, I'm not going to take this one out all the way, but I am going to loosen it. Uh, I found if you take this one out and then try and go and uh, use the pickle fork down here, uh, it's just counterproductive. So uh, get this separated before you fully uh, loosen this bolt in the subframe. Now for this bolt, if you're on a lift, it's a lot easier because you can get a you have the, the room to get a whole breaker bar on there. With me working on the ground, it's a little tougher. Um, so the way that I'm gonna pull this off may not be the way you do it, but just know it is really torqued in there being a subframe bolt. What I have to do, like I did for the other side, is get my force multiplier here. And <laughs> it's got this, Man, this, this thing has been the most handy tool. I tell you what, sometimes it helps just to put Charlotte on something and take her for a walk. But this one end we got is kind of flat, so I can put a wrench in here. And then all I'll end up doing is putting this ratchet, or this wrench on my ratchet, and from the other side of the car, just push uh, this way to loosen with all my body weight. Okay, and last bolt to loosen is the 16 millimeter for the stanchion arm. I don't know why this one's a 16 and the one back there is a 15. You think they just keep it all uniform, but uh, gotta switch sockets for this guy. Now you may not be replacing this because um, if you're just doing the control arm, then you take the nut off. Uh, my light. Then like I said before, you just be taking the nut off uh, up here. Um, since I'm just gonna remove uh, or I'm replacing this bushing, bushing as well. I'm just going to remove this. So 16 millimeter, get your socket on there. And the breaker bar and extension of choice. Okay, once I'm confident I've got all my nuts and bolts cracked loose, I'm going to take the pickle fork and separate this ball joint. I'm also going to mention that you can use a, a proper ball joint separator. Uh, these you can rent from like your auto, auto parts store or O'Reilly's, AutoZone. Um, this one though, I think even Harbor Freight sells these. You want to get a small one because the one that I have on hand and which is why I'm going through the, the fun of using a pickle fork is, as we saw earlier, space is pretty limited so there's not See how thick this uh, top edge is of the ball joint separator? Um, you can get this end around the bottom, but there's not really a whole lot of room for that guy to fit on top of the nut like he's supposed to. So only do this, only use the pickle fork if you're going to be replacing the whole control arm, which I assume most of y'all are, because this old ball joint, when we get done with it, is going to be pretty well shot. So. 
Uh, keep working the pickle fork with the hammer, and then once you've kind of uh, given that a couple couple goes to give you some some space, get the pickle fork all the way in there. And this is where I use my titanium lacrosse stick. <laughs> it just so just so happens that it fits over the pickle fork nicely. Uh, and being titanium, I know it's not going to uh, snap or break on me. Um, so this is going to take quite a bit of force, and is also the reason why I left that nut on, uh, as you saw earlier. There we go. This next little bit is just a quick word to the wise for those going with the Talaferro uh, upgraded bolt option. This bushing they give you is, is bigger to accommodate the bigger bolt, so the stock bolt doesn't quite fit. But your stanchion arm, whether it's stock or new, is going to have one of these little press nuts in it. Now, in order for this big bolt to fit all the way through, it'll fit through here but it won't fit through here. So you have to remove this press nut and uh, there's a little trick to doing it, which I'm gonna show you if you are using the upgraded bolt. This was the stanchion arm, except it had this press nut in it. Let's see if I can see, yep, it was on that side right there. Um, I imagine from the factory, they come like this and depending if it's a passenger side stanchion arm or a driver's side, they just stamp this little press nut into either one of these holes. Um, but to remove this, let's see, it was in there like that. To remove this, you're going to use the, the stock bolt. So you got the... That's, that's the, stock the stock bolt. Just stacked stock in there. Yep, just stacked in there. Just stacked in there. Set it down. Give it a little more leverage. It's a good thing the um, that nut threads both ways, like you can thread it from the outside like this. Right. Yeah, that's what, that's what kind of confused me at first. This was a little harder, man. It's brand new. Hello? Hello? Dad's showing the internet his, uh, See how it's almost out. <laughs> his little trick here. Yeah, it's almost out. <laughs> there it is. Wow. Ooh. I usually just get it like kind of started because then you gotta bend them down over here. So do you want to stop it there and then? No, no, keep going. You can tighten them all the way. Okay, because I wasn't sure if you needed to be able to move to attach the other piece. 